This is Mark Bada. He's one of our, our frequent attendees here in Europe. Uh, he's a great guy and he had a tweet earlier today saying that he's going to patent every single stupid password idea possible so that he can sue every idiot trying to implement them and turn them into products and make that into his basic business idea. <laughs> and that should be a, a nice introduction of Mark, I think. Uh, yep. There you go, Mark. All right. Um, <clears throat> Mark Burnett, um, I do security. I've been oh doing it for... God, seriously? <laughs> it's all right. It's all right, believe it or not, I've been doing it for... Oh. <laughs> I've been doing it for about 15 years. Um, I've been working in security for about 15 years. I've been uh, working in IT or working with you know security-related stuff. I've been uh, doing that for about 20 years. I've been writing code for about 30 years. Um, a lot of what I do... Well, in the last 15 years, I've worked in just about every area of security. Um, a lot of what I do now is uh, code security, uh, developing training presentations, and like, things like that. Um, but I just kind of wanted to start in, in talking about how I got into security and how I got interested in passwords. And it started off uh, about about 20 years ago. I was working for this company, and I was I was writing code, and um, I'd go in every day to work, sit down on my computer, type in my password, which was, you know, dog name, couple numbers, or something like that. Um, work all day, write code all day, quit in the, you know, shut it down at the end of the day. Next day, walk in, type in my password, dog name, couple numbers, um, and I'd do this every day. And I, I, about every month or so, they would ask me to change my password, and so I would, you know, being as clever as I was, I would increment it. Um, so, you know, one day, I mean, before it was, it was dog's name one, two, the next time it was dog's name one, three. And now sometimes I would get really clever and skip a few, you know, dog's name 19, so dog's name 25. So that's, that was my, that, that's what I, that was me. And, uh, so anyway, I, this was a boring job, and so I spent a lot of time researching, and I got got into researching uh, security, most actually hacking, and um, and I was really interested. And I, I learned a few tricks, you know, how to just tricks, and I got this reputation around the office as being the office hacker, you know, because I had these things that made me look a lot smarter than I really was. Uh, one day, one of the managers came to me and said they had this problem. What happened was. The, the network administrator and the VP got in an argument, and the administrator just left the company. But he didn't tell anyone his passwords. Now, the VP was too stubborn to call and ask for the passwords. So this manager comes to me and says, you know, he wants me, since I'm the hacker, you know, uh, he wants me to come, he wants me to go and, and, and break all the passwords for the network. And I, I said, yeah, okay, sure. And I got thinking about it, like, oh, no, what did I get myself into? Because I wasn't really, you know, it was just a few tricks I knew. Um, so anyway, I spent I spent a few hours doing this, and I one thing I realized is that um, people have really bad passwords. It wasn't just me; it was everyone. And another thing I realized I was pretty good at guessing, but um, I went from one system to another, and got all this guy got all the passwords. I mean, it was you know su Superman twelve, Superman two, Superman one two three. You know, Wonder Woman. I mean, it's just really obvious passwords. So I, I went through and got them all, and I sent them to the back of this manager. Um, he went home. Next morning, I got up uh, as I was, I was walking up the office. The, the president and the vice president of the company just happened to be walking in the same time I was, and I swear they rehearsed this. But as I walked up, they both bowed before me, opened the door, and let me into the office. And so I, I thought I was pretty cool, you know. Like, wow, I'm, this, I'm the office hacker, you know. And I went down, sat at my desk, and typed in my password, you know, dog's name, 59. And that's when I realized, you know, how horrible, you know, I was. I was just as vulnerable as anyone else was. So I got into security. I got into passwords. And it kind of became my my life's uh, hobby, really, is to, is to 
learn about passwords, learn how people choose passwords, learn about how um, the, the the thought process that goes behind it. Uh, so I that that's that's my thing. I I've spent my years doing, even though I've got my day job, I I've always been fascinated with passwords, and I think it's great that we have so many other people here who are interested in passwords. Thanks for letting me speak here. It's really my talk is just a big rant. So thanks for listening to my rant. Never had someone to do this. I never had an audience listen to me complain about passwords. My wife, well, she, she likes me to do it only when, I, when she's trying to fall asleep at night. You know, talk to me about passwords. <laughs> so, yeah. Been there, done that. Yeah. She thinks I'm an idiot. <laughs> so anyway, um, I get a lot of emails because I've been doing password stuff for a long time. I get a lot of emails from people. They want me to check out their password solution. And I oh, yeah, that's great. You know, I love looking at new stuff. And just I warn them, though, that if this is a graphical password scheme, I'm not going to be nice. It's always a graphical password scheme. So, and I'm never nice. But um, this, you know, I, I hate them. I've gotten to a point where I just really hate them. You know, I hate hearing about them. I, the, every day there's new pa graphical password schemes. I also hate all the biometric stuff. I mean, come on, logging in with your feet? <laughs> you know, there's so much time. I, so much time, I, mean, I, know I don't hate biometrics, but I hate how much time is spent and how much effort is spent logging in with your knuckles or your feet or, you know, the way you walk or whatever. Um, and it's, I, I think it's just a, a huge waste when there's so many other problems that we need to solve and that we haven't solved all these years. Another thing that's kind of annoying is seeing how many mobile authentication apps there are. And they're good, you know. They're, they're, you know, most of them, or many of them, are, are solid. And but the thing is, there's we need a thousand of them, you know. And, and each one's proprietary. Each one they don't work with each other, and each one requires a, a major investment from the company. So that's kind of what I hate. Um, there's some more things I hate. Press releases that use password kill, killer in the title. Research papers that use novel approach. It's never a novel approach. <laughs> Articles that use the phrase passwords are passe in the title. Kill a password. And I really hate the stock photo. <laughs> it's everywhere. I mean, you, you don't see an article without this. Okay, anyway. Stock photo. Yeah, and sometimes it's red. Yeah. And sometimes it's reversed. There's, there's one that's reversed. So, oh, okay. So I've got this um, tie. And I am going to give it away. A little contest here. If anyone can tell me who or what or anything about the first password hacker, or when, or the story, or guess. Oh, you're going way back more, way further back. Go ahead. Back, back in the 60s. Right. You are correct. So you get a password tie. So it started off, this guy right here uh, came up with a password scheme. It was the first password used on a computer. And you know, it was, it was time sharing. They had a, it was the way they, they kept everyone's files separate, it's the way they kept track of the time um, used on the computer. Well, the Alan Schur, uh, that's uh, Corbat, Corbato. Yeah, yeah, and um, it, uh, Alan Schur uh, was one of the students there, one of the doctor students, and he needed more time. He already used up all his time on the system. So he uh, found out that there was a file. Uh, uh, let's see here. Grab my thing. Uh, UACCNT.secret was, was a file that had all the passwords in it. And even though he didn't have access to the file, he, they had this uh, system where when you wanted to, want, want to run a print job, and, you know, it usually took a while to queue up the print job and get it all printed and get it, you know, go ahead and get it. So you'd, you'd submit a, a punch card with the, your account name, the name of the file you wanted printed, and then you'd go and pick it up later. So he submitted that file, used the system account name, and went and picked up the password file uh, later, and it was all printed, so he had all the accounts. So that's the first password hack. Okay, so graphical passwords. Um, <laughs> graphical passwords. So we spend, like I said, a lot of time working on graphical passwords. Other people spend a lot of time. But uh, 
you know, there's, uh, okay, I, I pick on graphical passwords because it's a good example of, of going astray and, and, and the way we do our research. And, and 17,911 patents for graphical passwords and image-based passwords. Seven, and think about that, 17,911 pat, patents. I mean, I think we've thought that one through all the way. Okay? <laughs> I mean, we don't really need any more graphical password schemes. There's uh, about 2,100 uh, uh, research doc, uh, scholarly documents <laughs> um, that ri written about uh, pa uh, graphical password schemes. I mean, it's just we've spent way too much time figuring out problems that we really that weren't really problems in the first place and really don't need solving. So uh, the flaw. Okay, well, first of all, the pa graphical password schemes are Usually there's, there's presented uh, several, um, 10 minutes already, wow, uh, several images. You pick one or two that, um, I've got a lot more ranting to do, come on. <laughs> um, or you, that's right, if anyone wants to hear any more ranting, I've got to, okay, so anyway, you either pick a picture or you pick some points on a picture or you draw a shape or something like that. Now the flaws are that it's a small key space. Now. A lot of people argue these, you see these formulas in the research papers that say how large this key space is. They're wrong, okay? The, it's the, the key space is small, um, most of them. Uh, they're based on visual interactions, okay? So you, you've limited people with, with, um, with, with visual impair, impairments. Uh, you uh, have issues with, uh, if, there's, if you don't have a graphical screen or a graphical environment, um, you can't use it with an API or anything like that. Another problem is they're not exact, so they have to be a little bit fuzzy um, if you don't hit the right spot on the screen or whatever. Or if you do allow that, then they're, they're uh, I mean, if they're not exact, that, what, they, what they're doing is basically saying, you know, it's like a password where they let you enter it in one letter off and they'll still accept it. Okay? Or they're too exact where you get a lot of false uh, negatives and reject it. There's hashing issues. A lot of times the, um, these schemes are based on, I mean, the, the, you have to, uh, it's based on logic where it has to make a decision whether to let you in or not. You can't just take like a password and hash it and compare it. Um, so there are, depending on the scheme, there are issues on storing the hash. They actually have to store in encrypted form the actual answers. They're open to shoulder surfing. Uh, less convenient. Uh, sometimes they can, it actually easier to type in a password than um, picking pictures from the screen or whatever, uh, moving the mouse around. And they're still a password. They're still knowledge based and they still have a lot of the same weaknesses as passwords. Now, um, the, uh, we've got, Okay, so one of the things we can do, and we've, we've, it's been 50 years, and we've got, we really haven't made a lot of progress on passwords. I mean, we've, we've come up with some things, we've come up with some, some good ideas, and, and some of the policies are, you know, things have relaxed, and we've, people are a little bit smarter, admins are a little bit smarter about how to do things. I remember once on a mailing list, it was about, probably about 15 years ago, um, where I, uh, I talked about it. The, the password length is all that really matters. They so were talking about complexity, character sets, all this stuff. And I said, you know, if you have this password it's long enough, it really doesn't matter which characters are in there. And I got so much hate mail from that. I mean, geez. So anyway, it's taken a while just to get that, you know, just the basic things down. I mean, we're still having secret questions where they're asking for your eye color. You know, and it's, 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 we, we still haven't really got the basics down, let alone the more difficult problems. So I was thinking that it would help if we had more standardization. Give us, um, figure out really what our problems are, what our weaknesses are, and go from there. That way, that way we know where we need to spend our effort. Um, authentication standards, there's a number of them. We've, you, many of you heard of the FIDO Alliance, but there's also MIDAS, Security, Coalition, Auto, um, and uh, there's, all these competing groups trying to develop standards. Of course, the FIDO Alliance has uh, got a quite a bit of industry support, but there are also a lot of other groups trying to establish these standards. Um, but what we really need are metrics. Uh, the um, 
these alliances are mostly APIs for communicating, but the metrics are really what tell us what is uh, what's wrong with our systems, uh, verify that our, our, our mechanisms for authenticating really are going to work in the way we think they work. Um, it's guidance for developers that helps you when you want to purchase products and you understand, really just you, you quantify the strengths and weaknesses of any system. Oh, come on. There we go. So, oh wait, okay, that's right. Okay, that, this is what happens when you don't have standards. Okay, so this is a patent I found one day. Uh, fingerprints, you know, people don't like fingerprints. So hey, someone thought of a great idea: put a fingerprint on a device. You know, a little fake fingerprint. So you've got the, you've got a, a fingerprint, but a device. The problem is, you, instead of getting the best of both worlds, you, you get the worst of both worlds. But um, so anyway, one of the groups is IDESG, and they have done a lot of work on standardizing, coming up with these metrics, coming up with um, these principles, the guiding principles for how uh, authentication should happen. Uh, it, it's still really unorganized. Or st it's still really much, very much in its infancy, but it's the one I've seen that has the most potential. Um, I think we, we as a as a community, should participate in that and and guide the the guide the um, the way the the direction we take on authentication, um, but beyond what they've they've established, we've got accessibility issues. I mean, my ten year old doesn't have a cell phone. My father in law doesn't have a cell phone. Would probably not use it anyway. Um, there's uh, so you know authentication going through SMS isn't going to work with him. Uh, there's legal issues. Uh, there's ethical considerations, for example, using biometrics and, and, and enrolling people without their knowledge. Um, Facebook has done this, uh, where they, they use behavioral analysis to see if, to, to understand if it's really you working on, you know, uh, working on the site or interacting with the site. Um, that's kind of a, a light example, but the, the, a company could, for example, take pictures as you're walking in and use that, enroll you basically into a, uh, authentication system without your without your knowledge. There's also cultural issues. Uh, there's also issues like some people just don't like touching things that other people touch. So a fingerprint uh, scanner may not be a good idea for people like that. Um, so design patterns. How, how am I doing on time? Okay, so another thing we need to do is we need to establish well-defined Design patterns. We've we've done things. You know, we've said you've got to use a hash uh, salt with your hash. You've got a certain processes you go through with your password resets. But I mean, we're still having problems with secret questions, all these things. Um, token and attribute binding is another area where you don't see a lot of, of talking about that. Multi uh, multi factor authentication. People are still doing that wrong. Um, what you have, of course, multi factor. Uh, there's an issue here with usability. Like I, I said, my, my father-in-law or my 10-year-old, I mean, do we have, we don't really have systems for, that will really work for people like that who, who don't really understand computers very well or who are too young or may have other disabilities. We don't really have good ways to, to scale that to those, that user, ba uh, user base, um, scalability. Uh, I have a, my keychain has like 10 tokens on it, you know, hardware tokens, because, you know, I got, I like hardware tokens, but, come on, doesn't anyone else like hardware tokens? <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's only going to go so far. You can only have so many hardware tokens, and to really have that security, you've got to have some kind of, of way to make this work on a user scalable basis. Loss recovery, uh, Recovering from uh, losing your token or the token breaking or token wearing down, and a lot of uh, companies allow multiple tokens, but they only let you use one at a time. You can choose; you know, they, they support different methods, but they only let you pick one. And it would be nice if I could use uh, a hardware token when I log in my computer at home, a different token when I log in from work, and maybe a different token when I'm uh, like a, a authentication uh, a Google Authenticator number. Um, the top fee number, or whatever. Um, when I log in from my phone, I mean, it would it would be nice to be able to have multiple uh, tokens. Uh, one thing that Google supports is um, having multiple tokens uh, when you 
log in. So if you lose one, you can have a backup one uh, to recover. Um, so yeah, multiple multi-factors. Uh, it would be nice to be able to have more than one token if we want it. But the thing is that we really haven't established guidelines for how to do this. And, and you know, the, we haven't really said you need to support multiple tokens. You need to support, uh, you know, this this minimum amount of, of of security. Just like with LastPass, I mean, you you uh, log in with your YubiKey or something like that. But on your phone, you just log in with your phone, and it goes, you know, it, it lets you log in with that. You don't have to provide the second factor. Presumably, your phone is the second factor, but you can lose your phone. So. Uh, Wow, I missed all my good stories. So one, okay, here's a good story. Uh, this is my conclusion as a story. So uh, I used to play around with my kids and have them type passwords behind my back, like common passwords, and I would guess what the password was. So one time years ago, I was I was doing a sales meeting with a client, and the admin gets up, and uh, and I, I was actually passing a kidney stone at the time, so I was just kind of like this with, with my head. But he types in this password, and I recognize it, you know, admin123. I mean, I, I knew this password so well, the sound of it. We type it sometimes. It sounds really distinct. Um, I, I sat up, and I said, is your password admin123? And it was, like, quiet for a second. All of a sudden, the whole room burst out laughing. This, this admin turned bright red. But, yeah, good skill to have. Um, so I didn't get the job, though, as a thing. <laughs> um, so anyway, I mean, we're a world of secrets. We've got passwords, but we really haven't developed much. I mean, you read the, these old mailing lists, and they're saying they're having the same problems, they're having the same discussions that we're having today. We really haven't figured this out, and we kind of, as a community, need to, you know, contribute and, and guide the, the the thinking and the guide the research and and write blog posts and and and. Uh, Establishes where where we should be putting our efforts. What are the problems that are unsolved that we really haven't solved yet? And that's it. Any questions? I I noticed that you use the example dog's name many times without ever telling us the dog's name. Is is that because you're still using yeah, that still as your password? password so. <laughs> Some passwords you just can't change. Dog, <laughs> dog two thousand fifteen. Yeah, I'm, I'm way past that. Oh, sorry, I was just going to ask you the name of your dog 15 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Well, I, I think Mark should stick around for, for the last talk as well. Uh, it could be interesting. Well, since we're doing lighthearted questions, what are your views on the use of janitor's key rings for multiple physical tokens? Oh, that's a great idea. That's about where I'm, I'm going to be moving to. But, um, yeah, I, I had one of my sons, I, he just loses everything. He's gone through like six cell phones. Um, I gave him a token. I thought, you know, I, my kids, uh, you know, they have to deal with me. Um, so I gave him a token to, to log into the account. He lost it. I mean, geez. I, I, so I put a chain on it. It was a big long chain on the next one I gave him a big long chain on it and he, he still lost it. So I gave up. <laughs> but yeah, I, I should have, I should have gotten one of those janitor things. So. So Mark actually has done a book on, on passwords. Uh, I remember uh, purchasing that online. I just had to read it. And I wrote that 10 years ago, and it's all still valid. Much of it's still valid today. I, I mean, I, I have no better answer than than uh, than you on like why we, we continue getting stuck. But one thing I have observed is that a common thread is when people start talking about you know uh, how to get rid of passwords. Is they they always start it seems to me in the in the absolute wrong places, making a long list of what's wrong with passwords. And if you yeah. want to get rid of them, you'd be far better off making a list of what's right with passwords because it gives you a better understanding of you know right. hey these guys have beaten everyone who's climbed into the ring with them in the last you know quarter it's, century exactly. and make a list of everything that's right with them gives you a better idea. Of yeah. What you have to beat. Exactly, and that's, it's always, passwords are broken, so hey, let's get rid of them, let's replace them. And then the first logical conclusion is, what if, it, what if we could mm -hmm. log in with pictures? But see, the thing is, yeah. if you're going to do pictures, you might as well just think of, you know, the, the pictures, you know, Apple, dog, whatever, battery, and, and write out the words as your password. If you're going to have to remember what it was anyway, you might as well use that as your password, so. What's that? Okay, but uh, Facebook, yeah, I'll do that. Uh, there have been mentions here also of of movies like you know war games and sneakers, and obviously, 
all of you have watched those movies multiple times and you haven't, shame on you. And what's but, what's the password? What's the password for uh, Doctor Falcon's Professor Professor Falcon. Joshua. Joshua. Yeah. Joshua five. Okay, and then what's um? We we seriously need to do uh you know a password uh competition. Pa- password trivia. How, yeah. How about Trinity's password in the Matrix? No one. Zion a uh, Zion with a zero. Of course, you know because she's elite. Um, the and password zero one, zero for one, the evil German that. hacker in the Cliff Stoll book, uh, The Cuckoo's Egg. Ah, oh, that was. Nice to know that. Benson Hedges. Hedges, yeah. He used oh. Benson and he used Hedges on different accounts. Nuclear launch codes for the U.S. until 1978. Hey! <laughs> Eight zeros. <laughs> Eight zeros, yeah. yeah. Well, your password for the day. So. Okay, so again, thank you, Mark.